Welcome to this edition of the Belmont Journal News Now, and we have Joanna Jubilis, Senior Multimedia Journalist with the Citizen Herald with us to talk with us about some of the things happening um, in construction and real estate with the unfolding COVID-19 uh, virus um, crisis taking place. And Joanna, it's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while, and, and frankly, I've missed you. <laughs> I, I miss you too. I miss seeing everybody at Belmont Media Center and being on the set in the studio. And I hope we'll be all together again soon. Well, I hope so too. So con construction, so far, um, it doesn't appear that, that uh, construction of the, the new middle and, and high school um, complex has been halted. Uh, the police and DPW. But Joanna, can you update us on that? Absolutely. Like, as you know, COVID-19 is affecting everything. There isn't anything that it isn't affecting. So of course, construction um, could be affected. At the present time, it is not, which is good. Baker, Governor Baker has not ordered construction to halt, so that's good, but that could change. So in the meantime, um, what they're doing for the Belmont Middle and High School project, as well as the police station project, is they're following the guidelines that Governor Baker has put out for construction work. Um, now, some, it, some residents have actually suggested that construction should be, should be halted. And yes. can, you, can you tell us why? I can't. So Leah Lesser actually is one of the residents that is very concerned for the health of the construction workers. She said she was jogging by the Belmont Middle and High School site and she saw construction workers just standing inches apart talking to each other and then she talked to them and um, learned that, you know, they don't always have hand sanitizer, uh, not every day. Some days they have it, some days they don't. Um, and so she was just concerned and she just wanted, she asked for the Belmont Middle and High School Committee meet to halt construction because she's just concerned about their health. They had a meeting uh, yesterday, the Belmont Middle and High School Building Committee, and uh -huh. they discussed all of this, and Skanska, who is the construction manager for the site, assured them that they are following these guidelines. As far as the hand sanitizer, he, they actually said, we, we put it out every day, we put it in the uh, bathrooms that they have, but and unfortunately, it at night, right? people are taking it. So he doesn't know who, he doesn't know it could be the construction workers or it could be someone else taking it desperate mm -hmm. times. People want that hand sanitizer, but they'll keep putting it out and they keep talking to all the construction workers. There's never more than 40 on the site. They're, they're all working outside. It's all outdoors. So they're just making sure they have the six feet apart rule that they're following that. They don't even leave the site. That's a big thing. They don't want construction workers to leave the site. Come to Belmont, go to the site, do not leave the site. Do not like go to the center and get takeout, bring your lunch, eat your lunch on the site. So con construction continues for now, but there was an interesting point that that one of the members of the the the, the building committee raised, Bob McLaughlin, um, about this issue of potentially closing down construction um, during the the COVID nineteen crisis. He he seemed to be saying that I think that that um, you know if if the governor has not shut down construction statewide, or if there isn't some larger event like that. Um, Belmont could ex be exposing itself to significant financial risk if it were to vote to, to shut down construction if, um, on its own. It That's a very good point. Also, halting construction um, would really set back the timeline for the project. Hopefully, Governor Baker won't require it to be halted. It would really have negative effects on the timeline as well as potentially the cost. And that's another thing that could be affected. They don't know yet for both the police station and high school projects. Materials uh, could be delayed coming from other countries. Um, this could affect this could affect the timeline as well. It could also affect the cost of the projects. All right. Well, um, um, shifting to to another topic. Um, we're we're entering we're entering spring, and although it doesn't always feel like it, but 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 we are, and this is traditionally the time when the real estate market in town takes off. How's yeah. that? How's that? How, how's real estate doing right now? Well, 
would not surprise you if I told you that it's not booming as it normally would be. Um, interestingly enough, though, the number of homes for sale in Belmont now is actually exactly the same as it was last year. Okay. But what's what's different is there's a lot of uncertainty about what's you know what's to come and it's constantly changing and the way that that the realtors have to work with their clients has changed significantly they have to do a lot via technology FaceTime virtual tours some agencies aren't even having open houses at all okay. um, private showings only and you know being very strict about wiping all the handles down and having everybody wear gloves and booties. Um, and, some and sellers, I'm sorry. A lot of home sellers are, 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 are worried too, aren't they, about having anybody in their yeah. home right now? Yes, so if someone is considering selling, there's a few factors due to COVID-19 that are affecting their decision about whether or not they wanna sell. Number one, they're afraid to have all these people coming in their house. Even if it is just private showings, they, they just may not want anybody in their house because we're it's such a contagious disease and people could have it and not know it. And the other thing that's making them hesitate is what if I don't get the amount of money that I could get if, the, if it wasn't this pandemic? That's right. another good question. But some realtors are saying, you know, if a seller's comfortable, if they're ready, list the house. Worst case scenario, if it doesn't sell, you could always put it back on the market. And because it's this pandemic time, people won't, it won't have a negative impact on your sale. Cause you know how you list a house and it doesn't sell and then you put it back on and people are probably like, well, what was wrong with it? Well, in this case, it was the, it was the pandemic that was, that was the cause. So, so it doesn't hurt to list it if you're ready and if you're comfortable and buyers on the other side, interest rates are at a historic low. And there are buyers out there still. So this is re isn't really affecting the buyer's market as much as the sellers. So an another, um, an another business um, that's, that's in the area that's affected by the COVID-19 outbreak um, is um, curiously enough, the, the, um, the, the funeral business. Joanna, can you, talk, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I can. I, I wouldn't necessarily say, um, Funeral businesses are affected financially because they, they still have business. Mm -hmm. But what's different is um, that you, if, if someone loses someone at, at this time, they cannot have the, the typical wake or funeral that they normally would have where they could have everybody. It's open to anybody. Now it's limited to immediate family. And you, you, know, 20, you would think 25 people or less or 10 people or less in some cases. All right. Well, um, that that's that's sad to hear for for many people. It and, is. It is. And if someone's getting cremated, uh, they they do have the option to postpone their uh -huh. memorial service, which is good, because you know then you could have anybody come to the memorial service. So so there's more options for cremation. Um, but if you're getting buried the traditional way, it's it's really limited to immediate family. Some funeral homes are offering virtual services. Oh, that's interesting. And some are even offering, if you want to postpone the traditional wake and funeral, they will hold the body. So you might attend a funeral by Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, how they're doing it, but I mean, as you know, there's church services, uh, exercise classes, so many things are done virtually now with technology. It's, it's, it's amazing. But I mean, I'm I, I, it's, it's unfortunate. The timing could be unfortunate for some people. If they do pass during this time, they would not have the, the traditional funeral and uh, wake that, that they may have wanted. Okay, Joanna, it's, it's been good talking and, and I hope that we'll see each other again soon. Um, in the in, flesh. <laughs> in person. <laughs> um, that would be nice, wouldn't it? It would. So far okay. I'm Corona free, knock on wood. <laughs> well, thanks so much, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.